our next insider makes sure blood flows to different parts of the body. The doctor kind of compares it to plumbing, and it makes sense. You know, the pipes have to be working correctly. And one of the problems he treats is called aneurysms. Take a look. The blood vessel is at risk of either rupturing or thrombosing. Um, uh, Patients with venous problems, which tend to be younger patients, uh, patients with uh, blockages in the arteries of the legs, blockages in the arteries of the carotids, um, uh, and development of aneurysms everywhere in the body, particularly outside of the brain or the skull and uh, the uh, heart. All right, so since you brought up aneurysms, that's a great way to start the show right now. So let's talk about, um, briefly, because I know we're going to do more of an anatomy in just a few seconds, but what they are and how common they are. You hear about them. I'm not sure how common they are. Can you tell us? Uh, about 14 to 20,000 aneurysms are diagnosed annually wow. um, and treated. Not, an, not all aneurysms need to be treated. Um, the ones that need to be treated are the ones that are more at risk of rupture. Um, uh, aneurysms are defined with the dilatation of an artery, which is the blood vessel that takes oxygen, which is usually under pressure, um, to, uh, that it dilates to more than 50% its normal size. So at certain size and certain arteries, that risk, once it dilates, sort of like a balloon popping. Mm -hmm. So when a balloon pops at a certain size, once that wall gets so thin that the balloon pops, it's sort of the same physics with, uh, with an artery. At some point, there's a, a size that the wall is so tight that the next step is for it to rupture. All right, so as we continue our discussion, I do want to take a moment to let our viewers know that if you have a question for doctors, and the doctor here, of course, you can give us a call, toll-free number, 855-796-4475. Once again, that's 855 855- 796-4475. We would love to hear from you. All right, so the doctor is now next to our 3D image of what is an aneurysm. So doctor, walk us through first the anatomy right there, and then I have a couple questions after. So this is the descending thoracic aorta. So this is the chest, and here is the abdomen. Um, these are the arteries, the iliac arteries that go to the left and right leg. Um, we have the visceral segment, which are arteries to the, to the guts and to the kidneys. This specific artery we're looking at is in the descending thoracic aorta. So this is a saccular aneurysm. These are actually the highest risk of rupturing. Um, these will rupture at, at smaller sizes than what we call fusiform aneurysms, mm -hmm. where you see sort of a, a not so focal dilatation. When you say saccular aneurysm, uh, you said that's the most dangerous. Does that mean you have seconds? Or at that point, you're looking at a pretty bad situation? Um, these develop slowly over time. So uh, not seconds. I mean, you have probably days to weeks to be evaluated okay. and to be treated. Um, you know, I think if you present to the hospital with this specific aneurysm, you'll be treated during that hospitalization. So they won't even let you leave? Uh, and I would say in most cases, no. Okay, and how do you treat this aneurysm and why does it develop, if I can ask that? How does it form? Well, aneurysms, depending on where they, what part of body they, they're in, usually develop from some weakening in the wall of the, of the blood vessel. And so uh, there are some advanced histology, which I won't go through now, that where the weakening of the wall will, and the pressure coming from the heart will cause dilatation of the artery. This one may have started from a, a small plaque in the aorta mm. where blood leaked into the different layers of the wall, causing some weakening. Um, but they tend to be seen more in males than in females. Uh, Any reason why? We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Um, okay. I know smoking is a, one of the biggest factors, as is uh, blood pressure. Uh, this is one of the few illnesses where you see less frequently in diabetes. Um, so that's interesting. Although diabetics get it, you know, uh, uh, by rate they get it less frequently than than non-diabetics. Does size matter in terms of that size there? In terms of the the you know how big it can get? Absolutely, size definitely matters, and we were talking about okay. uh, aneurysms. And, and all what, different types of aneurysms, size matters. And what happens next when that occurs? Uh, what could happen if it was left untreated? Uh, the biggest risk is and the most, you know, the highest mortality is from this rupturing into the chest or an abdominal aortic aneurysm rupturing into the belly. And frequently these grow uh, silently. So they're asymptomatic in, in many cases. So a, a patient may not even be aware that this uh, entity is occurring. When it ruptures, you become quickly aware because there's severe pain involved uh, and a patient can pass out and become, you know, deathly anemic. And you did mention a few minutes ago, and I did want to ask you, you said that uh, some people can live with aneurysms. Uh, and 
that kind of left me going, wow, is it kind of uncomfortable that a patient know, okay, you have an aneurysm, but you can live with it, don't worry about it? Like, do you have to keep on checking it? Um, well, you have to look at your risk factors for having an aneurysm. So okay. family history is probably the number one risk. Uh, if you have a first degree relative with a history of an aneurysm, you need to consider what age they developed their aneurysm to begin to th talk to your doctor about when you should start being looked at. Um, one of the issues is uh, men who smoke, there is a, a safe uh, act that helps where Medicare will pay for screening, but in many cases insurances won't screen for this because it, you know it's expensive to screen, but it's, it, it, it's not as common as, for example, well, prostate cancer or some other illnesses. But nonetheless, you know, one of the challenges as vascular surgeons face is trying to find a way to screen more patients to right. find these. I know, because it's quite scary that you don't even know you may have one. Correct. And people are walking around, and who knows if they have one at this point. Correct. correct. All right. We have some uh, tests that might, you, might be used to determine if you have an aneurysm. Uh, let's walk through these doctors if we can. Uh, CT scan, uh, MRI, MRA, echocardiogram, ultrasound examination. Do you use them all, or do you have a, a go-to? Um, for abdominal aneurysms, we begin uh, with ultrasound examination. It's the best screening exam because it doesn't involve any radiation and it has almost no bio effects to the body. CT scan is a way that aneurysms are frequently found coincidentally, looking for something else that an aneurysm is found. Um, CT scan is not a good screening tool because it involves radiation. Okay. So if we you know, radiated an entire population, that can have its own side effects. Um, MRA, MRI are not good screening tests, um, and again, those when those uh, are performed, usually we find an aneurysm coincidentally. And echo is when it's done for other reasons can identify a thoracic aneurysm in the chest. Okay, and aneurysms can they be found anywhere in the body, doctor? Sure, aneurysms can be anywhere the arteries occur. Okay, um, you know uh, the brain, which would neurosurgery and neuroradiology would tend to treat. Um, but in the chest, the abdomen, legs, upper extremities. Now, you know, different locations are more or less common than others. By the way, to learn more about aneurysms or maybe to watch another episode with this doctor, download the Health Channel app.